Right, so hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in this video we're going to be learning how to use dictionaries in Python. So you guys might be wondering what dictionaries are. So just like variables, they're a form of storage, um, a bit more similar to arrays or lists in Python, but they can store a lot more and they're a lot more useful and handy. So without further ado, let's begin. First off, like always, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file on my desktop and call it um, dictionary.py. You can call it whatever you like. Um, I'm just going to go through some of the um, common um, methods that you can use on your dictionary and some of the different things that you can do using a dictionary in Python. So first off, what is a dictionary? As I said, it's um, a form of storage so you can store information to it or data to it and um, yeah but it's a lot more than just a variable because you can store multiple fields of inf information in it so let's assume um, that I had um, a car factory and I wanted to store details about a car so if I wanted to store details about a car I would have to do a couple of variables so I would have something like car name equals Ford um, car model equals Mustang and you guys get the general idea uh, car I don't know fuel equals petrol yeah so I'd have to do a lot of these so what um, and uh, so what the dictionary allows us to do is avoid having to do all of that so when we want to save a lot of information about a single um, subject sort of like object oriented we just we can just save it into one little dictionary so what do I mean by that? So let's say we had a, um, so the company for the car would have been Ford. So Ford equals, and then we use our curly braces, which is where our fields for the Ford dictionary are gonna be saved. So in here, I'm gonna type in brand, which is obviously Ford. So we're kind of following a key value kind of um, structure over here. So the first thing that you enter is the key, then you use a colon, and the second thing that you enter is going to be the value of that key. So I'm going to enter a few more keys in here, and you need to um, separate each key and value with a comma. So brand, I'm going to go with model, colon, uh, model is going to be Mustang. I'm not the best at cars, so I might be wrong here, but oh well, it's just for the tutorial. Then I'm going to type in fuel, to colon, and then petrol. Cool. So instead of having to type three different variables, we've now got this all of this information about a single car. Let's actually just rename this to Mustang. Let's just rename that to Mustang. So let's so instead of having to say car name equals Mustang, car brand equals um, Ford, and car model equals Mustang again, car, um, and fuel type equals petrol, we've done it all using one clean variable. So now you might say how do we actually access this information? So this is the first bit that we've learned how to store uh, data. So key and value pairs is the main keyword to take away here because we need to save with a key and then give that key a value. So now if we wanted to find out um, what this looks like, we're going to quickly print and see what it looks like. So print Mustang, run this. And as you see right here, as I said before, it's stored as a dictionary and then we have a key value pair. So we have the key called brand and the value of that is forward. We have a key called model, value of that is Mustang. We have a key called fuel and the value of that is patrol. Cool. So what if we just wanted to access the brand and none of this stuff? Pretty easy stuff. So there's a couple of ways of accessing information. There's actually two. So two methods of accessing information. Um, the first one is by doing print then you need to mention the name of your dictionary so where your dictionary is saved mine is saved into a variable called Mustang and then I'm gonna go in and use my curly brace this is almost how we refer to an array object but then you need to type in in here the actual key name so my key name is brand so I'm gonna go into my Mustang um, dictionary right here and then I'm referring to the key called brand so when I do that it should return the value of it which is Ford so if I run this now it should say Ford which is my second line it's giving me the first line because I've printed out the previous one as well 
so it says forward now similarly if i wanted to access the other keys in there i could just type in instead of brand i could type in model and i should be presented with mustang and instead of model i could just type in fuel and i should be presented with patrol so at this stage it kind of is evident that it's helping you manage code a lot more better and then it looks a lot more better as well it's more manageable because everything that's related to this one object sort of thing is just in here and then you can change it as you wish just in one spot so now the second way of accessing information would be by using a dot get method so you could do print cars dot get if you prefer the just the normal brackets then this method is recommended for you and then when you do dot get you just mention the key that you want to access and this you don't need to use square brackets so if you prefer this kind of syntax where you don't have to mess with the brackets go for it and we should have okay cars is not defined obviously because it's mustang i don't know why that came to my head mustang and it says ford because we've referred to the brand of the car right here which is why it says ford cool so that's the two methods of accessing information now i'm just going to make a comment here saying two methods of accessing info or let's just say values using keys because that's what we're doing we're using the keys which are fuel and brand to actually um, access their values from this dictionary called mustang cool so we've got a pretty solid understanding of how to create a dictionary and then how to use two methods to actually access information from it now let's move on and learn how to actually update these values if we needed to so let's say we had a function where we wanted to update things I'm just going to make a comment saying updating values of a dictionary cool and then let's say i wanted to update the um, fuel type let's say a new model comes out and the fuel type changes to diesel now i don't need to go ahead and do this directly in here i can uh, do it down here by using the following lines of code so i could do something like uh, mustang so first of all you need to use the name of your dictionary and then use square brackets and in the square brackets you want to mention what you're going to be updating so i'm going to be updating my fuel type and then use an equals to sign to actually reassign what um, the fuel to whatever value you want it to be so i want mine to be diesel at this point because i'm let's say it's just changed to diesel recently and then i'm going to go ahead and print the whole dictionary again so mustang let's run this now and then it says two methods of accessing um, key val values using keys which is the previous one and then it's done what we've done um, next as well which is changing and updating the fuel type to diesel so if you look right here brand is still the same model is still the same but the fuel has been updated to diesel due to this line right here so i'm going to make a print line right here just going to say um, updating values of a dictionary cool now that's that let's move on to the next bit um, also if you wanted to if you don't like the square brackets once again you can use the um, normal brackets approach so you could do something like um, you could do something like cars dot get fuel actually let's change brand this time brand um, equal, uh, why, is, why did I type in cars? I keep typing that. Must have. Brand equals. I don't know, has been changed. And then we'll print it off. Okay, so apparently we can't use that, so ignore what I just said. Sorry, that was my bad. Um, so it's apparently just one way of actually updating variables, which is the square bracket way that I just explained before. So just ignore what I just said, sorry about that. Now we're going to move on to actually um, learning how to add additional key values onto the dictionary without actually having to manually do that. So adding an item to the dict or dictionary. Now if I wanted to add a new item, all I do is I'm going to do something like I'm going to type in the name of my dictionary, which is Mustang, and then the name of my new key, which is going to be, let's say I'm going to store how many doors there are, so doors, and then I'm going to do equals, 
uh, let's just say it has two doors. And when I print my Mustang dictionary again, it should have a new key value where it has a key of doors and the value is two. Print this quickly saying, add an item to the dictionary so that we actually know what part belongs where. So this is the part we're looking for, adding an item to the dictionary. So we have brand Ford, model Mustang, fuel diesel, and then we have also appended a new key value onto it, which is doors two. Cool, pretty cool stuff. So we've been able to add an item to the dictionary. So you guys might um, already realize that these operations or methods are very similar to an array type because they are quite similar as well, but you have a lot more advantage of using a dictionary, which I'm gonna show you in a bit. So let's say for example you wanted to make a copy of the dictionary that you already have and save it into a new variable, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is let's just say um, making a copy of a dict print, making a copy of a dict dictionary. And then all you need to do is create a new variable, so I'm going to say mustang uh, duplicate equals equals mustang mustang and then you use the dot copy method on it and then what it's going to do is it's going to take the um, current or most updated mustang uh, dictionary and then assign that to your mustang duplicate i can prove that by printing the mustang duplicate dictionary out and then it should be the exact same of the mustang copy so as you see right here making a copy of the dict it's literally the same as this one because they have copied each um it has copied the mustang dictionary into the mustang duplicate dictionary cool so that's how you make a copy now let's learn about how to actually remove a key value if you need to so removing a key value and you are going to remove the key value um, by providing the name of the key so you need to first of all um, like always type in the name of the dictionary that you want to remove that from and then use the dot pop method so dot pop and then I'm gonna take off um, doors because I don't want them anymore I guess well actually let's just take off let's take off fuel so when I take off fuel and I print um, Mustang again now just before doing that I'm gonna make another print statement so I know where to look for the outcome of this Being a key value Okay, let's run this and if you notice right here, um, removing a key value and the item or the key that we provided was fuel. So anything with a key fuel has been deleted from this dictionary and this is the most updated one. So that's how you remove a key value from a dictionary using the key name. Now let's move forward and learn how to actually clear an entire dictionary, so make it empty just like it would be in the start so clearing a dictionary now when we clear a dictionary what we need to do is um, doo -doo 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 -doo. it's pretty simple type in the name of a dictionary and then dot clear and now when I print Mustang it should just be an empty dictionary but first off I'm gonna print clearing a dictionary cool and as you see right here, clearing a dictionary and we only have um, curly brackets, which means the dictionary is empty. So that's how you clear a dictionary. Now I'm going to censor this line right here. I'm going to comment it out because I want the dictionary to actually remain populated for the next things that I'm about to do. So what I'm going to do next is show you guys how to loop through the different keys that are in a dictionary so that you can use them for whatever you like. So looping through of a dictionary so to loop through we're going to be using a for each loop so for x in mustang let's do something like print x now some of you may think or get the idea that this is going to print out the values but it's not it's going to print out the keys so looping for keys of a dictionary cool oh. And if you see right here, as I said before, it says looping through the keys and then it only shows me the keys, brand, model and doors. And remember we took off the fuel, that's why it's not showing up. Um, now if you wanna um, 
actually get the values out of this, we have another method to do so. Before that, there's also another method we can use um, to actually... Actually, never mind. Let's just skip to the for each um, for now on how to loop through the keys. Now, I'll show you how to loop through the values as well. Now, to loop through the values, you have two methods. Let's start with the first one, if I can type. Looping through values of a dictionary. Print. Um, looping of a dictionary. And then I'm going to do for each again, a for each loop for x in Mustang. So for each um, key in the Mustang dictionary, what we want to do is um, we want to print and then we're going to print Mustang because that's the name of our dictionary. Um, we need the square brackets x. So we're actually referring to the value and then this should print out the values for us. And as you see right here, where it says looping through values of a dictionary, it's giving us the value. So brand, Ford, model, Mustang, doors, two. Perfect. Now there's also another way you can do this just in case you hate the square brackets approach. You can do 4x in Mustang dot values so this way you are actually capturing the value straight away instead of using an x later on so for x in mustang dot values print x this way you're actually gonna what's wrong object is not object is not iteratable why is that hmm so for x in do, 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 do. okay so i forgot the brackets on the values because it's a method and now here we are as you see right here we have ford mustang 2 using the first square bracket method and we also have ford mustang 2 same outcome using the dot values method if you hate using square brackets or if your program just happens to need it for your logic to work cool i'm gonna create a new line and now in here we're gonna do um looping through both keys and values because sometimes you may need to loop through both the key as well as the value so to do so what we need to do is again once again we're going to be using a for loop so for um x comma y because we're we need two variables this time so x is going to be the key and y is going to be the value in mustang um dot items so for each item we need to print x comma y so that should print out the key and the value so if i can maximize the screen it says brand ford model mustang and doors 2 so it's printing the key and the value while iterating through each item in that um, dictionary cool so that's how you do um, accessing key and values by looping through them now let's move on and learn how to actually check what the length of a dictionary is. So to check the length or how many items are in a dictionary, a dict, we're going to print uh, length of a dict. And then we're going to do a simple function. So mustang dot, actually we're just going to do print um, len and then we need to do the name of our dictionary which is mustang len just stands for len now when i print this out we have length of dict three which is correct based on the last or most updated version of the dictionary so brand model oops brand model and i think it was doors yeah so we have actually three um key value pairs in there which is why it's saying the length is three perfect that's that. Now we're going to move on to learning how to nest dictionaries. In my opinion, this is the most useful part of the tutorial because this is what I use quite often. Now you guys might say, why are we learning this all of a sudden? Um, I'm going to say because it's very useful. It's going to help you keep your code concise and also give you um, hassle-free variable management in this case because you won't have a lot of variable names. Instead, you can just refer to the key value terms and just use a dictionary 
Um, nesting is going to be the most important part of this video, so I hope you're listening. So, nesting dictionaries. Cool, so to nest a dictionary, let's assume we had a factory like I said before, but this time we have different um, manufacturers for the cars. So, let's do all cars. Because last time we only had one car, which was Mustang. Let's do all cars equals a object. Oh wait, I keep calling it an object because I'm used to JavaScript, so um, sorry about that. It's actually a dictionary in Python, that's how they call it. Now all cars equal to an empty dictionary for now. Now in here I'm going to mention my first um, car company, which is going to be Ford. Now when I mention the value for Ford, I'm going to open up another dictionary in there which means I can actually concatenate or just add more information in here. So I'm going to later on populate that. So I'm going to go comma and then I'm going to put my next brand, which is probably going to be Merck or Mercedes, but I just can't be asked to type it out. Then that's going to be an empty dictionary too. If you see right here, we're nesting all of these dictionaries inside of our main dictionary called all cars which is going to be really easy to manage later on once I've finished with this and then Volkswagen let's do as well um, that's about it um, cool so what we need to do now is actually go ahead and populate these um, companies or car makes so in each of these companies we're going to be storing a key value pair of the year in which they were built let's say the most recent of the Ford was 2010 um, let's go down to Merck inside the Merck dictionary. Let's say the most recent year for Merck was uh, 2020. Let's go down to Volkswagen. Obviously none of this information is accurate, it's just for the sake of this tutorial. Let's say the year for this was 2000. Cool. Might look a bit confusing to the eye, but it's a lot more easier to manage. So now I've got a nice little dictionary that's nested with other dictionaries. So all cars pretty much includes information about uh, cars from all companies. So cars from Ford, cars from Merck, and cars from Volkswagen. You can conquer, um, I mean, you can nest as many dictionaries inside the dictionary as you like. As far as it doesn't get too confusing, but I would recommend sticking to probably two or three. So now, if I wanted to, I can even add, I don't know, make, and then whatever. I could keep adding. Um, so to show you what it looks like, I'm going to go ahead and print the all cars dictionary. So print all cars and as we expect it's going to show us all the information so I'm going to maximize the window and now over here as you see we have Ford which was the first key value pair um, where we have an another dictionary that's assigned to our Ford which is the year date in which the most recent car most recent car was released so we have year 2010 then we have information about Merck where we have the year 2020 and then we have information about Volkswagen which has um, the year 2000 so if you wanted to access this information separately you can do it really easily so let's do let's say I wanted to access information about Ford I could do print um, all cars and then I'm going to type in my key name in here which is Ford because I want to get information about Ford and now if I run this up as you see right here, I have the year 2010 because I am ringing up the information from my all cars Ford. Now let's try something else that might not work or it may work. Um, let's give it a shot anyway. All cars and if I do Ford uh, and if I do two more brackets to try and grab the year as well by itself. Not 100% sure if it will work. Oh, and it does work. So it does work as expected. So if you wanted to find the year individually instead of having the key value show up, you can look for Ford first. Then when it's found Ford, it's pretty much in this dictionary. And then you want you can look for pretty much any key that you have in there. So for example, if I had another one in here that said color, um, and let's just make it black for now. Um, so if you wanted to access the color, all you have to do for the Ford color is type in color in here. So this will return the color of the four Ford model that you have stored in your dictionary. Let me run this and it should say black. Perfect. 
So that's about it for today's tutorial guys. Hope you guys have been able to learn um, quite a bit about dictionaries and how to use the different methods in it. We're going to be using this information to actually create a rock paper scissors game very soon which I'm going to release um, on the next tutorial. We're going to create a command line version for rock paper scissors first and then we're possibly going to move on to um, creating a GUI if possible. I'm going to check if it's actually doable and if it is I'm going to post that tutorial next. Um, and that's about it. Thank you guys for all the support that you guys have been showing me so far. I really appreciate it. If you guys could keep sharing my videos, that would be awesome. Um, if you guys would somehow like to contribute and donate to the videos um, straight away, you guys can do so by purchasing a super chat emoji or highlighted message while the video is premiering. Um, also guys consider joining the discord chat which is going to be linked in the description It's really fun in there and chill you can meet new people and also discuss programming ideas and if you like to you can also follow my socials and I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace